which ID is the best on the planet? Is it Notepad, as you can see right here? Is it IntelliJ, as you can see right here? Or is it Eclipse, as you can see right here? It's going to be a very close fight today. And after spending 11 years coding in Java, I am not going to be giving you an abstract overview of what I think. I'm actually going to be showing you a software that I made, which together we're going to be testing. And yes, that's right, you're seeing Minecraft because I spent the vast majority of my Java development time coding for Minecraft ecosystem, more specifically, making Minecraft play. Now, if you want to make your own games and you want to code crazy things like that, we actually have a program called Project Orion for people looking to learn Java development and video games production. And the best of all, of course, this guy's on there. I'm hosting live coaching calls twice a week where you can jump on, you can scream at me, and you can maybe share your screen so that I can help you much faster. We have a full 30-day guarantee, and we even have certificates as of November 2023. And we work with JetBrains. So I hope that JetBrains is not going to end our beautiful collaboration where we give our students access to their premium software for four months after seeing me, you know, expressing criticism over a couple of their features. I, I overall think it's an amazing piece of software. And if you, again, want to learn more about Java, making your own game coding, and you are hungry to learn and you like Minecraft, check out Project Orient. I'll leave the link for you in the description. So to start off, to introduce you Notepad, I don't have to introduce you Notepad. And I guess I don't have to introduce you Eclipse and IntelliJ because the vast majority of folks here, they already know about these two. Long story short, these all three are, I'm not kidding, used for real developers to make real software look amazing. So. First of all, let me just start with the look and feel. Yes, we have beautiful notepad and the look and feel of, of notepad is just so distraction free. You just open it, there we go. And that's your code. Obviously there isn't much of any function in here, but it gets the job done and I kid you not, you can actually write a fully functional application. So notepad gets a solid three out of 10 points. Second is Eclipse. Well, Eclipse has been around as, all, as almost many years as I've been around. And let me tell you this, it barely changed the design as far as I remember. For the last 11 years, it always looked the same. The only difference is, yes, I actually ripped off the same font from IntelliJ because I just ended up falling in love with it and I forced Eclipse to use it. So maybe next time Eclipse is crashing, it's actually in retaliation for me changing its font. Otherwise, I've made pretty much no adjustments and neither the developer team behind Eclipse did. So I'm gonna give this 2005, 2006 ish design a solid five out of 10. Not because I can, but because I had to, because I got used to this, because we back in the days had no other choice. Now comes the stunning IntelliJ, as you can see, especially with the new update, the new UI. Isn't that lovely? I mean, I tested the beta version of it and I instantly was attracted to its simplicity. You can just visit this menu, you can go to appearance, and then it's just extremely easy to navigate uh, and customize things. For me personally, as a developer, one thing that I absolutely hate is clunkiness, and I love focus and simplicity. And if I can hide everything like this, and I can code here, and here is my source code, right? I mean, you know this stuff. I'm gonna give it a beautiful nine out of 10. Next up, is a scientific term called multi-dev environment. Let me explain that because I just made it up. And what that basically means is you having multiple softwares open at the same time. This is only for hardcore dudes. If you are a normal guy, you never use it. Unfortunately, after 11 years, I think I suffer from a developer's disease. And yes, I have about a dozen of different softwares opened right here. I'm gonna give Eclipse a straight 10 because I'm gonna show you why. If you have two different softwares that are connected with each other, let me just open up the links right here, and you have a call, call called Check Console, which goes into another piece of software, which is the foundation right here. There we go. And let's say that Check Console, let me just find it, accidentally, right? Accidentally, this happens often than you would think. I just go ahead and I rename it, right? Now, this call right here is used about 200, 300 times over all of these other softwares. You can see how fast 
Eclipse actually renders that we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. And now I have to do, now all I have to do is open up the package and I can beautifully see where the problem is. And now I can just fix it 200 times. How lovely is that? Now comes IntelliJ and I'm sweating already because IntelliJ doesn't even work with the same concept. Not to say that it's detrimental, but I'm just saying specifically, if you want to work with multi dev environment, yes, a term that I just made up. If you want to have multiple softwares open, you are going to suffer a little bit. First of all, you have to import this into your project. And for every single project, you have to import the other software, whereas, whereas Eclipse has a concept called workspace. So basically this entire package explorer can have all the other softwares, you just boot up, you just boot up Eclipse and they all appear there. Whereas IntelliJ, it, it works with a little bit different concept. So I respect the difference there, but still it's just more of a headache. So you have to go to project structure for whatever ma main project is opened and then go to, I think modules and then hit the plus and import a module like this one. That's the first struggle. This, the second struggle, if I directly open up simple command, which is hosted in the other library, You'll notice that it says decompiled class file. So we have to actually chose, choose the sources right here. And then we have to confirm choosing roots, which can be a bit confusing. And now we're going to get a beautiful ID error. That's right. And it even complains that library source does not match the bytecode. You know what? I don't care. I'm just going to open up. I'm just going to say, got it. That's right. Can I edit this? Yes, I can. And you know, unfortunately, if I edit this, it's not going to show the check console stuff right here. So what I have to actually do is I have to actually open up the simple command right here and it still doesn't work. You see how much time I'm gonna waste with this. Uh, and if I go with the class file, obviously I can't edit it. So I have to go with the source file. Okay. You know what guys, too complicated. I'm an idiot. Probably there's going to be a lot of great people in the comment section that figured it out. I barely work with this in, in IntelliJ. I just use Eclipse for this. Let me actually show you this problem when it comes to just having one program opened. So let's say that I have a class called claim, which has a private field. Let's just comment out this field for Eclipse. And you see now that immediately we know that this is causing an issue in the claims listener class right here. And it's very easy to find. What happens if I do the same in IntelliJ? Well, as you guessed it, absolutely nothing. I have no idea that the project has now multiple compile issues. And yes, guys, as you guessed it, I enabled build project automatically, but still I have no idea. If I go ahead and I fix these problems in this class, the actual project will be looking pretty good and you won't even notice. Look, I saved the class and I have no idea that the actual claims listener has a problem. I have to open it and wait for it. Boom. Now it loads and now you can see that this one is in red. It's very, very, very stupid. This is a really big issue if you are um, developing not just multi-dev developer, whatever it means, but also if you are just coding a lot and you have a large code base, it will happen more often than not that you will uh, you know, suffer from this issue. And of course, when I try to compile it in Maven, when I try to compile it anyway, it will render. But the point is, can I get this error before I hit the compile button? Because sometimes I don't hit the compile button before I make 15, 20 changes. And then I have to deal with all of these steps being super frustrating. So IntelliJ is going to get a very nice one out of 10 and Eclipse is going to get a very beautiful 10 out of 10. Next up, we have the search feature. So in IntelliJ, the search feature is extremely easy, fast, intuitive, and the best of all, you can even edit these things in real time. So you can preview any other class, the claim listener, for example, and you can just edit it right here, right? That is beautiful. I mean, there might be a secret reason why the search is so good because the lack of previous feature will compel you to use search 10 times more than you would in Eclipse. Now, Eclipse has a good old Windows 98 search. You have to open up a dialogue that will tell you absolutely nothing. You have to type it in actually, and there is no preview whatsoever. It's gonna go in and go in and go. There you go. And now you can actually see the search results. So it's very inferior. I'm gonna give IntelliJ a straight 10 out of 10, whereas Eclipse will get a nice Windows 98 four or three points. And the final thing that is quite interesting, not many people know about is live debug or hot swap feature. So what do I mean by that? Well, when making micro plugins, 
you have to basically compile the plugin, paste it in the plugins folder and boot the server anew, or you have to reload the server each time, which is very time consuming, very frustrating. Thankfully, Eclipse has an inbuilt feature, which lets you just go here into the run debug configuration and it'll let you just run the entire goddamn microserver as a part of eclipse and this is extremely easy because they literally embedded all the support for it so i can just go right here click links and it should in theory boot up the entire server and even compile push the latest version of my plugin into it the only downside is that it does not support maven it does, but not the way that I'm going to show you in, in five seconds. So we have to literally use an older technology called AND, which, you know, suffers from the lack of other features, such as poor, poor dependency management, lack of relocation feature, a whole bunch of other stuff. I'm not going to go into that nitty gritty. My point is, if you boot the server here, and let's say that you only want to make a small change in your code, such as we have the animate command. If I type in action, it'll say welcome to the server. I can rewrite this, but let me just demonstrate this first. Animate action says welcome to the server. If I change this to welcome to hell, for example, it should reflect immediately or almost immediately. Let me just check it out. If I save it, one, two, yeah, there we go. It says build, it said build very quickly and the changes is almost instant. And it's beautiful because you as a developer will literally save hours and hours of time waiting for your code to rebuild, push it, start a server, reload it. All that crap is completely gone thanks to the native support of that live debug feature in Eclipse. Now, when it comes to IntelliJ, I mean, you can see that it says Minecraft server and there's a magic button to run but that took me a ridiculous amount of time to set up. First of all, it takes longer to start because I found using the AND feature rather unstable, so we have to actually compile the whole thing with Maven, waste a couple of seconds, and then it starts to boot the server. For the record, I'm going to show you the edit, uh, the run or debug configuration, so that if you are not familiar, familiar with it, please just pause the video and you have pretty much my whole setup right here. Don't forget to make sure that the end build right here is imported properly. If you can't see it, just right click it. There should be and somewhere and then add as a build, or you can just uh, see these tool window bars and you should have an end somewhere here. And if you can see that, then you have to head over to plugins right here and check that the end is actually enabled to get this working. So that's the first thing. Now, if you boot a server like that, trickery 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 it will not actually change according to your code changes what we have to actually do is head over to the plugins again and install a plugin called safe action and this one was such a cause of headaches it literally got abandoned once then somebody else took over he abandoned it the second time now there's a third fork that i pray to god is not going to be abandoned because every single time my students are confused and i have to just keep track on it and update the links i really wonder why it takes them so long to add this little feature natively into intellij so that's the first thing you're going to install the save actions plugin secondly you're going to configure the save actions plugin because why not and intellij already has something called actions on save which is going to conflict with the plugin so you have to make sure to disable all of that then head over to save actions and then enable all of that which i just show you on the screen including build actions reload files and running debugger that's right and now when you start a server action just like that says welcome to the server and now i have to change this to something like banana or something funny save all rolling 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 boom now it says one class reloaded so it even takes more i think five times as as long as eclipse and unfortunately this is not entirely stable more often than not it will actually not reflect these changes so i have to do nasty tricks like edit it save it and then just hit enter to flush it so it basically just double reloaded it may be a problem with the save actions plugin but it's really annoying and we've had the issue with the live saving uh, the live code editing or live debug feature or whatever you want to call it for years now so i'm going to give intellij two out of ten it does not even support it so you have to go and you know spin around three times to get it done and i'm going to give eclipse a beautiful 10. 
All right, guys, that sums up this video. I'm not going to give you a complete verdict. I think both IntelliJ and Eclipse are extremely powerful IDEs. Both excel at certain arenas, as I've explained. So my ultimate conclusion is use whatever you prefer. Now you know the weaknesses and the strengths of each. Please respect each other. If somebody decides to go with Notepad or Eclipse and you like the feeling and you just don't appreciate the 2005 look of Eclipse, don't bash on them. I personally sometimes use Eclipse and I personally other times use IntelliJ. I use both and I have no problems with people using anything except calculators. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.